Hello everyone and welcome. A few months ago, some of our users suggested we add a function of modifier. Today, I'm very excited to share it with you. Using it, we can add modifiers layer by layer until we get a good result, and it doesn't destroy any hair shape we created before. Definitely, this is a major upgrade for Blender users. Modifier is children-based. There are three common modifiers, length, clamp, and noise. For the clamp modifier, there are two clamp types, parent and generated. Different types give different effects. Therefore, we can get more detailed layers for a natural hair shape. Then the noise modifier, which is also very useful to enrich the details. In addition, we provide a curve to control its influence range, certainly more manageable. The last one, length which is to vary the length of hair. We can scale the entire hair shape up and down, randomize the length of every hair, what's more, we have the opportunity to adjust the control range of a noise modifier that we've already done. You may notice that there is a three dot button by the side of many of the parameters, which is random. Using it, we can easily get more natural and organic randomness. Even more, Vertex group and texture can also be used to accurately control random range, which gives us more controllability. Alright, that's a rough introduction. Here is a girl model with a rough hairstyle. I'm gonna take it as an example. Before diving into it, let me first explain how to view and render the hair. The default display mode is not really good for us to check the effect. To solve it, we apply Cycles Hair Renderer again. As we mentioned in the last upgrade video, when we switch to this renderer, Cycles is still running well, so no need to worry about that. When we switch to Cycles Hair Renderer, two additional parameters are displayed. Select Strip, well, better now. Come into the Material tab and create a new material. Unfold Viewport Display and set a color as needed. Then switch to preview mode. Now it looks more realistic and is good enough for us to check the details of hair. Besides, there is another way to set display color flexibly. Enter particle edit mode and select color brush. Currently, there are no color groups. Hit show hair color and paint color to all the hair. Back to object mode, cool. If we want to set another color to just a few strands, how can we do that? Select the color you like and paint hair in the required part. Back to object mode, very easy but quite handy. By the way, when we hide hair color, the display color of the material that we set before appears again. Alright, let's look into the parameters. And for the children, both simple and interpolated will do. Here I use simple. Enable modifier. Usually I start off with clamp modifier, because the distribution of clamps is the basic layer of a hairstyle. These parameters are for clamping, these are for kink. Let's first talk about the clamp types. Here are two types of clamping. Parent and generated. Select parent and raise subdivision up to 1. Now every clamp is divided into two parts. We can raise it again for more small clamps. Keep in mind that the larger the subdivision is, the more yet finer the clamps are. In this case, the clamps without subdivision are originally small, so a small value is fine. The seed, just a random seed. It's easy to understand, so skip it. Let's look into this random. Hit it. There are three additional parameters. Type in 5 and take a look. Now, the subdivision values vary randomly from 1 to 5. Very simple, right? Then the seed. And then the threshold. Let's see how it works. When it's set to 1, there is no random. That is, all the clumps are divided into 4. When it's 0, they will be divided randomly. 
Okay, move on to generated. For a better understanding, I'm going to use this simple scene to show you how the hair distributes in this mode. When we set the density to 1, 4 clumps are generated. And when set it to 2, this clump is divided into 2 by 2. So the pattern is almost found. Let's try 3. We get 3 by 3. Besides, all clumps distribute evenly. We can see that they are perfectly rectangular in scope. To break it up, we can increase randomness. Then the hairstyle can be natural looking. OK, come back to this scene. Preserve length. Using it, we can keep the original length from being stretched when the hair is attracted to clumps. Use this scene again. To get the hair attracted perfectly, some hairs are stretched. Slight prism length, we can see hairs are getting shorter until reaching their original length. Back to this scene. Slide it and take a look. Got it? OK, that's all for prism length. Let's move on. Shape works the same way as the shape by default. Take a look. And we can use curve to control it. Clump. It has the same range with the default parameter, negative 1 to 1. Yes, there are some differences in the effect. We can see, no matter how much it is, the roots won't get attracted. Enable random. A small part of hair spreads out a little bit. Let's make a comparison. Before, after. Tweak the seed to find out a good result. Random range can be set greater than 1, but we have to type manually. Threshold controls how much hair can be attracted. So when you want to slightly lose clumps, this parameter can help. Come up to factor. It controls how much the clumping is. When reaching 0, there is no clumping, but with kink effect, Then threshold, which determines the amount of hair with clumping. Come up a little bit. Influence. It determines the influence degree of this modifier, then its seed, and then threshold. We can use it to control the amount of hair that is affected by this modifier. OK, so much for the clump modifier. Next, I'm going to explain the noise modifier. Well, it works too much. I scaled it down. This threshold works the same way as the one here. Still, random seed. Size determines the frequency of noise. Enable its random. We can see the frequency of some hair changes. For random range, it can also be set greater than 1 then the frequency can range from 0 to this number. Then magnitude. It controls how loose the hair is. Easy to understand. Turn on its curve. If we don't want too many flyaways at the end of hair, we can drag this point down and tweak the curve further as per your reference. OK. Magnitude also has a random button. And random range. And threshold. There is also a preserved length. It's the same as we've mentioned before. To show you clearly, let me adjust the parameters somehow. OK, raise preserved length up. So just adjust it when needed. All right, the next one is the length modifier. There are two scale modes, scale and cut. When sliding scale, the hair is entirely getting shorter. Turn on random. Also, three more parameters here. Bring down random range. A little bit is fine. Then seat. And then threshold. Turn off noise for the moment. Now, only a small part of hair is influenced by this modifier. Switch to cut. Turn on random here. I use it to break up tubulant hair tips. Let me show you how. 
First, cut the hair a little bit. Zoom in a bit. This strand looks a bit too blunt, so we raise the random range. Good. If you don't think it's layered enough, you can bring length down and raise random range one more time. Cool. Much layered now. Yet we can make it layered more. For the seed and threshold, there is another cool trick. Toggle the noise on and increase threshold. We mentioned that the length controls all the hair, but if we only want to shorten the hair that is controlled by the noise modifier, what can we do? Copy the threshold here in the noise modifier and paste it to length. And copy the seed to length. The length works as expected now. But the length looks a bit uniform though. In this case, we can enable the random here to solve it. Tweak the seed a little bit. Great! That's all for this modifier. In the next section, I'm going to talk about the kink. I'm going to talk about the kink in clamp modifier. Before that, let me add the clamp modifier. Come down here. Here are two kink types, curl and twist. Bring up amplitude a little bit. Directly type in 5. Typing is faster than dragging here and increase shape. I won't talk about it much, since it's basically the same as the one in Blender, so we mainly focus on the differences between curl and twist. Start off with curl. Obviously, the hair is just bent somehow, and without any twist. We switch to twist. Judging from the reflection on the hair, it's clear that the hair twists. A toggle on random here and alter random range. Note that the random range is 0 to 0 0.02. Let's change it to a smaller value. Also, we can tweak the threshold. If we don't want to influence the hair near the roots, we can use the curve. Just drag this point down and tweak it further as per our preference. Besides, no matter how large the amplitude is, the roots and tips are not affected in any way. But it's a hard rock to solve if we don't have this add-on. Ok, let's move on. Enable the random of frequency here. Take a look. Then the random of shape. and curve here. Well, the clumps looks a bit less, so we can increase the subdivision a bit and enable the random frequency. Looks much natural. The thickness of every clump is almost the same, so we can apply factor, and we can adjust more to get a satisfying result. It looks amazing now. Next, let me create a new clamp modifier. There are some more types here, and I won't talk about them one by one since the parameters are basically the same. But for the wave, there is a parameter that I would like to emphasize. Obviously, the hair is deformed along one orientation. Actually, this looks weird for real hair. So we added this parameter orange to solve this problem. Let's test it out. And enable its random. Looks good. That's all for this section. Next, I'll walk you through two cases that I've already done. Before we start, let me toggle off these modifiers. The first modifier that I added is a clump. And I selected parent here, then turn on subdivision and it's random. 
so that every clump can be divided into one to five small and finer clumps randomly. To get more details and layers, I tweaked the curve of shape like this. Yet if we raise up the curve near the roots, the clumps will be looser, thus the hair will be way too smooth. Come to random here. I loose the hair a little bit. Also, we can increase threshold to scale down the influence range. A factor there. Adjusted the random range and the threshold and the threshold of influence. For the second layer, I want a small amount of flyaway hair. I first set curl here and set amplitude to a small value. I also used a curve to reduce its effect near the roots and tips. Then set frequency to 1.5 and set a slightly high shape value so that it won't influence the hair close to the roots. Then clamp. And factor. They work, but the change is subtle though. Last is threshold of influence. When it's set to zero, all the hair is affected by this modifier. As we increase threshold, there will be more and more hair that is fully affected by the above modifiers. So, using it, we can control the amount of flyaway hair. After that, I added a noise modifier to make it a bit more organic. I adjusted the random of size. Then I enabled the curve of magnitude. Let's take a look. Without curve control, there are few flyaways. But with it enabled, there are some. Actually, that's because from roots to tips, the magnitude is gradually getting larger from 0 to 1 when the curve is disabled. Yet, when we enable the curve, the magnitude is 1 anywhere. Then I raised up preserve length to 1. That's it. Let's move on to the fourth layer. It is also to add some flyaway. That's more chaotic. Threshold. It's almost set to 1 because I just need a small amount. Then I set the size and it's random. Next is the magnitude. I didn't want to mess up the end of the hair too much, so I used the curve. Until then, I found the hair near the roots was way too flat. So I added one more clamp modifier to clamp the hair there somewhat. I lowered the curve in the middle. This way, the style there can be kept well. In fact, the hair is not layered or good enough for me. So I tried one more game, and I used twist. Let me switch to curl and take a look. Way too flat, right? But when I applied twist, the hair was twisted a bit, so it looks more dimensional and layered. Similarly, lower the curve on the right, and decrease shape. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. The last modifier is length. When getting close to hair tips, we can see they are a bit too blunt. So I layered it a bit with this modifier. Of course, we can add one or more modifiers as per our reference. That's the whole process. Next, let's dive into the second case. This is a slightly messy wool curl. Okay, let me show you how to make it. First of all, I added a clamp modifier and switched to twist. Set the amplitude to 0.007 and set the random range to 0.01. I didn't want to make the roots curl, since it would destroy the hairstyle here. So I used the curve to decrease the influence. Come down here. I set the frequency to 5 and turn on its random and set the random range to 4. I adjusted the shape in order to make the curl go down a little. After that, I raised up the subdivision and adjusted the curve. The factor. After this modifier, 
I got a rough hairstyle. Then I added a noise modifier to get a bit of hair that sticks out. So I set the threshold to 0.86, a slightly high value, then tweak the size, and enable curve, and preserve length. For the next modifier, I just wanted to make the clumps a bit more loose, so I set the influence to a small value and a big threshold. The next one is also noise. This is also to add a bit of flyaways, yet they are more chaotic. I set the influence to 0.04 and set the threshold to 0.91 and reduced its effect on the hair ends with curve. This length is to layer the flyaways cause too uniform length looks weird. So we need to copy the threshold and seed of the last modifier to this modifier and use cut mode. The last modifier is to solve the blend hair ends. That's all for this tutorial. If you have any question for add on, you are welcome to leave comments below and I'll reply to you as soon as possible.